Hi everyone and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. Uh, my name is Gavin and uh, it's quite a lazy Sunday afternoon here down in the south of England. Uh, the sun is out but there is still quite a strong wind. Um, so I was just sitting here looking at my bonsai display just thinking about some of the different projects that I have going and you know where these trees came from, how I started them, where I intend to take them, what I intend to do and I thought well I might as well get the camera out and run through some of these trees with you and just give you a bit of a tour of, of my display. So um, what I do, I, I, I reorganise the st these stand and, uh, and these trees and uh, let's have a look through and uh, one by one I'll go through and I'll show you my trees. Right, so this is quite an interesting tree. This is a bay tree and uh, what I've tried to do here is I'm trying to fuse two bay trees together. So you can see I've put vet tape and binding these two trees together and then I've wrapped it around with some thick wire. I've also added some wire to the branches so you have some really interesting funky shapes going on with some of these branches. And uh, this has been like this since, I think I did this in December. So it's only been like this for a short time. Um, but it's certainly alive. No buds are coming out just yet, I don't think. No, no, let's just have a look around on this side. Yeah, no buds are coming out just yet, but it's certainly an interesting project and and uh, hopefully will become quite a nice tree in the future. Um, I thought I'd, I'd mention uh, the reason why I have these flints here is I just put these on top just to hold the tree in the pot. Now, I'm not a believer in wiring trees in pots and the reason for that is, I think Nigel Saunders explained this in one of these videos quite recently, and that is... The, the problem when you wire a tree in a pot is as the tree grows and as the roots grow the the tree will naturally want to push itself out of the soil now if you wire the tree in the pot the problem you face is the wire can dig into the roots and so with this approach of just putting stones on or in this case flints just to hold the tree in place whilst the roots set i mean it, it, this has been like this since december so you know, we're now in April, it's April the 2nd today, so uh, I think it's quite sturdy now. It's, yeah, you probably could leave it without the flints, but just as a precautionary measure, I'll put that back on, and uh, come the summer, I'll take the flints off and it should be fine. Right, so the next tree, or next trees even, are boxwoods. So I have a couple of boxwoods here. Uh, so this one is just a small little tree in a, in a small pot. Um, quite young, I think I've had this now for, I think it's been about two, three years it's been in my collection. Um, just a little, small little a boxwood tree. Um, quite nice branching on it. Uh, for the past couple of years I've just been pruning it, trying to keep it small. It has quite a, quite a um, scar here and quite a big scar here. Uh, that's because when I, when I first got it, it was a, a little bush and it had all these multiple, you know, big branches coming from the coming from the um, the trunk. And so what I've had to do is go quite, that's quite a nasty uh, um, wound there, but I think over time, I mean, it is gradually healing, but I think over time it will, uh, well, at least I hope it will heal over and become quite a nice tree. Um, it doesn't look bad as it is. It just looks a little bit ugly with those wounds, but maybe in, in time they'll become a feature and, and that'll become quite a nice tree. So just put that to the side. Right, so the next one, so this is a root over rock project. And once again, back to the flints, just holding this tree in place. So you probably won't see too much in here. You can see the top of the of the rock. So what I've done is I've looped a few of the roots over the over the rock. I tied them in place just with some wire and uh, just really buried that deep into the pot and this is quite a large pot but I think over time as this tree grows um, I'm, I'm not going to do anything to this I'm just going to let it grow and grow and grow and hopefully with that the more the top grows the more the roots will grow and as the roots grow they should cling onto the rock and maybe in a year possibly two maybe even three I will take this out of this pot see what's going on and by then hopefully we can put it into a bonsai pot if just give that a little spin for you so you can see from all, all directions. So it is leaning to the side, but 
as this is only a root over lock project and it's in this big pot that doesn't matter too much because the, the position and that can be changed as and when we put it into a bonsai pot. Now this doesn't look like much of a tree and the reason is because I bought this um, as I normally do, I just, I usually buy, usually come springtime you can buy Japanese maples in supermarkets, garden centres, you know, they're, they're pretty much everywhere because a lot of people here in the UK have them as, as garden trees. Um, and that's how these two uh, came into my possession. Now, uh, this one was a much bigger tree. I mean, it must have been, or much bigger plant even, it must have been a good half metre or more tall. Now, last year, or last summer in the UK, we had quite a major heat wave. And the top of this just, it, it just burnt. I left it in the sun, I should have put it into the shade. Uh, and, it, and it just, it died, it died on me. And, and this is what's left, I mean, it's certainly an interesting stubby little tree. It's got it has a, a little shoot coming out the base here. Um, look what a little branch. Um, has a little branch coming out the top. There's all kinds of buds on it. Uh, you can see there's a couple of branches up top. They're both looking quite good, ready to pop and leaf out. Um, so yeah, it's it's not you know it's it's not it's certainly not world class, um, but. It's, you know, hopefully in time I think this will grow and maybe we can make something interesting out of it. But yeah, I, mean, I, I will continue to put this tree on my, on my channel, so as the months and that pass, um, hopefully together we can, we can follow the progress of this tree and hopefully it will become something quite nice. So then we go on to the next tree, I'll just put that over there for a the minute, if we have a look at this one. So this is a little bit bigger, again started in, in the same way, it's just a, a store-bought. Um, Japanese maple and you can see I've at, I think when I bought it it was a had a twin trunk come up here but this was way too thick compared to this branch so I thought to give some taper I I cut that branch that major branch off and let the secondary branch carry on as the new leader and then of course there's the next there's up here so this this branch up here took off and maybe that's a bit too straight I might in the future put a little bit of wire on that see if I can get a bit of bend in it but for now I'm just going to leave it as all kinds of leaves coming out on it, it looks really happy really really um, healthy so again that's a, another one for the future right so here we have a collection of birches so just move that one up just to the side so we start with this one up back here I am uh, I have to admit I am useless when it comes to remembering the names of trees and that's why I use these little white tags I mean you know I, I don't have that many but my memory is so bad I have to use these tags just to know what they are. So uh, this one here as you can see is a Himalayan birch. Uh, this was started from seed I think a couple of years ago, I think it's back in 2021. And again it's a very young tree but very healthy, looking quite nice. I'll just spin it around for you so you can see all sides. Looks quite nice and um, yeah it should be quite a nice tree in the future. So that's, that's that one. Right, if I move on to the next one. So this one is a, a paperback birch, or paperback birch, paperback birch, or paperback birch. Um, so yeah, let's move that one out of the way because it's confusing the, the shot. So yeah, this one is a fair, it's the same age. It's um, started from seed a couple of years ago. And, and, uh, looking quite good, looking very healthy. All kinds of shoots and leaves on it, um, nice branches. Again, I mean, with trees this side, with trees this size even, I, I, I don't like to do too much to them. I mean, a small amount of pruning every now and again just to keep them in shape. Um, but for the most part, I just, you really just want to let them uh, go and just, I mean, ultimately you want the trunks to fatten up and that's why I have them in these bonsai parts. I mean, by no means are these a bonsai yet, but these pots are more than big enough for, for these trees and they have ample root space so you know over the, the years that follow I mean th this tree could stay in this pot for all oh, years I mean years and years and years probably five six seven years I mean it's, it's just you know as it gets bigger and bigger it's it's um it, sh it should be fine it has plenty of root space um but but yeah it's, it's just a, a little small tree and hopefully in the future will become something quite nice Right, so the next, the next two, so these two 
were collected. They were collected quite locally and I'm not entirely sure what kind of birch they are. I highly suspect they're silver birch, um, but it is possible they might be downy birch. Now this is naturally leaning. Uh, this was collected as a small, as a small, um, small tree or sapling even. It's probably only a year old when I collected it. And I've put it in this bonsai pot just to grow it on. Now, again, you can see it's, it's coming out into leaf. I collected this last year and it doesn't, doesn't look bad, it's not a bad little tree. Um, I quite like the, 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 the bend in it or the, the lean in it and what I like to do, I have this little, this little model digger, I like to just put that on there just to give the illusion that the digger is, is knocking down the tree. So that's that one there. Right, so the last of the birches. Sounds a little bit like a horror film, that the last of the birches. But um, yeah, so this tree I think is dead. I mean, this was collected at the same time as the other one. It's, and there isn't a, any sign of life on it at all. I can't see a bud anywhere on it. Is that a bud there? Mm, I don't think that can come into, no, I don't think that's a bud. No, I can't. I highly suspect this is dead. I think that one's a goner. I mean, I'll keep it in this pot for the rest of the year. Maybe, you never know, something might happen. But as it looks right now, I think that one's a goner. Right, so so this here in the, in the blue pot, uh, this is a jasmine. And as you can see, this has been contorted into the, the classic S shape. Um, these, we have a jasmine bush grown in the front of our garden. So I took this as a cutting. I think I've had this for, I think about a year, I think about a year now, and I put the wire on it when I first collect, well, on the cutting, um, when I potted it up, and it's it's rooted now, there's plenty of roots um, consuming the pot, and it's looking quite good. Hasn't come out into, well, I don't know, saying that, there is a bud just up on top. Uh, there are a few buds on it. Uh, so... Yeah, maybe, maybe, um, over the coming weeks that will leaf out and become quite a nice plant. Uh, there's no leaves on it just yet, but if we leave that a little while, just let that do its thing, that should become quite a nice plant. Right, so next one. Uh, this is a Forsythia. Now, uh, this was collected only a few, a few weeks ago. Um, now, if you've ever dealt with Forsythia before, you'll know straight off the bat that they have a very brittle um, plant. Um, they're, they're more of a shrub than a tree, but they're very, very brittle. If you let these branches get too thick, you have a nightmare of a time trying to bend them. I mean, I've done that many times in the past and, and completely ruined trees. Um, so with this one, what I've done, I've, this is actually a ground layer. It's a branch. We, we have a Forsythia bush in the garden and a... Uh, uh, a branch had come down, hit the soil, and shot back up again. And it was this this um, th th this shoot in the middle that had been the main leader and taken off. Uh, I think when I collected this, this was about half a meter tall, and I've cut that back to to this this height. I think there's a couple of buds. Yeah, there's a couple of buds just there and there. And then you have these two these two um, branches coming out the side, which I've I've wired. Um, put some real quirky design in them. Uh, it's, it seems to be happy, seems to be doing quite well. There's a, a bud up there that's looking like it's going to pop any any day now. Um, has a, quite an interesting root base on it. Um, there's not, I mean it's, it doesn't have the best root base because it was a ground layer but you know I think in time, Forsythia is when they get going they, they put out root layers no tomorrow so you know, in, in about a year's time, when I go to put this in a bonsai pot, this, this pot will be full of root. Um, so there'll be all the possibilities to, to to find the best roots and and create a nice root spread. Right, so these are a couple of uh, redwoods. So in the black pot here, this is a, a giant redwood. And uh, these are both grown from seed. I think they're about two years old. They're sown in, I think the seeds were sown in 2021, in, well, in the autumn of... Of 21. Um, yeah, so this this um, giant redwood here, this had a, a it doesn't look that good. The, some of the lower leaves have, have gone a dark brown. I'll, I'll zoom in a bit so you can see. There's a, 
quite a bit of green up on top, but the, the lower leaves don't look that healthy. And I think the reason is because I, I repotted this back in February and the root system on this was terrible. The, the roots are all knotted up, they're really in a, in a bad way, so I had to cut a fair bit of the roots away. Um, now, it, it, I, I think at least it had enough to survive, I hope it did. Um, and I've bit some good ones I saw here. Uh, I've got it on my on the bottom shelf of my of my bench, so it's this own direct sunlight. It's in the shade, and I hope. I mean, there is green at the top, and there are shoots coming out, so I do hope that one continues to grow and becomes a nice tree for the future. So, along next to that is a this is a coastal redwood. Again, um, this I'm growing in a in a larger pot. Uh, I have the aim of growing this quite big. Uh, there's all kinds of shoots on it, all kinds of branches and things going on. Uh, just in case you're wondering, uh, these down here, I always like to experiment with cutting, so whenever I cut anything off of off of a tree, I always just stick a cutting in the pot just to see if it takes. And uh, at the minute, are they, they're still green. I mean, I, I think I put them in, it's during the winter time, it must have been November, maybe December I put them in. They're still green, so you never know, maybe they might strike and end up with a few more coastal redwoods in our collection but as for the main tree yeah it's just very healthy all kinds of buds and shoots on it uh, branches very very green uh, and as I say I'm just gonna let that grow really you know really just grow like a, a, a telegraph pole really because I think in the wild these they just grow straight up with branches coming off so with this one especially I'm just gonna let that go and and grow northwards and and see what happens Okay, so with the redwoods, I also, in my collection, have this big chap. Now this is a dawn redwood. Let's just put that to the side. Yeah, so so this one here, this is a dawn redwood. And this I, I bought. I bought it as a bonsai tree. Uh, it was a couple of years back. I just have a little metal um, marker in here. Just, I, I had, had it mined. I was going to have that as the front when I come to repot into a bonsai tree. Now, when I originally bought this a couple of years back, it might have even been, I think it's three years back, it was during the pandemic, I, uh, it, it came in a bonsai pot. And, it, you know, I don't know if you've ever bought a bonsai tree from a garden centre or anywhere like that. It's, the root systems generally aren't in a good state. And I think just because they're commercially grown, they come from China, they're mass produced by the millions. If you get a good one, you're, you're lucky. And every now and again, I chance, you sort of chance my arm. I, I have a, a punt, I, I, I buy one and just see what I can make out of it. And this was one of them. Um, the reason why I have it in this big pot is because Dawn Redwoods grow and they really grow. You know, when they're happy, they take off. So I thought with this, I just let it grow, let it put out all kinds of shoots and buds and branches and, and, and really see what happens from it and I, uh, looking around on YouTube and online I, I can see, you know, I understand that Dawn Redwoods take easily from cutting so I think by letting this grow I'd be able to take some cuttings off of this and possibly add a few more Dawn Redwoods to my collection. Right, so sticking with the theme of uh, bonsai trees bought, uh, you know, buying the mass-produced bonsai trees, uh, this Japanese larch was one of those. And again, it, it's, you know, it came in a, you know, in a, in a classic blue bonsai pot. Um, the, root, the roots on this were horrendous. Um, you, you, when you think of the size of this tree, I mean, it hasn't changed in the year or two that I've, I've had it. It's, the growth on it has been quite poor because the, when, when you think this tree must be, must be about 30, 35 centimetres tall, and the root base was, uh, no word of a lie, it must have been you know, about, not, about 10 centimetres, probably 8 to 10 centimetres square. It's a tiny, tiny little root base on this. Really was grown in poor soil, had this weird, strange green goo uh, mixed in with this soil. It's really in a bad way. So I took that out of that soil, put it in this, in this, um, terracotta flower pot, put some good um, soil, a nice gritty um, soil mix and just try to let it recover and 
hopefully become quite quite a nice tree. I mean, it seems happy now. There's all kinds of buds on it. Uh, it had quite a nice year last year. I mean, it did suffer a little bit in the heat wave during the summer, but but yeah, at the moment there's all kinds of buds growing on it. It's should give it another week or, or a few weeks, a couple of months, and it should be in full leaf and, and look look good. Right, so this tree, this is the pyracantha. This was the one that Zach from It's Not a Cedar was asking about after my, you know, when I put my first video out. So yeah, this um, this tree I've had for, I think I've had this for a couple of years too. Um, as you can see, there's all kinds of shoots, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of shoots going on this. It's, the, the, um, I originally, I bought this from a garden center and it was in the discount section. And the reason was because at, at the time, it was it had another great big shoot coming out of here. Uh, the top of it was dead. It was brown and dead, and, and you could see there's a price tag on it, and you could, could see clearly that the garden centre were having a job trying to sell it because they kept slashing the price. So I think it started off at something like forty pounds, that was its usual retail price. It then dropped down to probably like twenty. Then went down to fifteen, then twelve, and then I eventually picked it up for seven. So to get a tree that size for seven pounds, I didn't think was too bad. And uh, I've done, I cut that big branch off that was here, well actually it was here. You can see it's beginning, that wound is beginning to, to heal just there. And yeah, it's quite, quite, quite an interesting tree. It has some pretty thick branches on it. So it's gonna be a bit of a job to, to style because of the risk of, you can see here, I mean, there is some inverse taper going on here and then this branch is very straight but you know with all these buds coming out on this there is a possibility to do a quite a drastic prune and maybe use them as one of our new leaders um if we go around there's loads of branches on this side so there is oh hang on let's pull back a little bit um yeah so there is there is that branch in there so what we could do in the future is cut this here and then have this branch so have that branch there acting as our new leader that's a possibility also yeah that's that's a thick one there so that that is a possibility maybe we could do a cut across here and then have that one acting as our new leader there as for this branch on the side again we we, we could do we could take similar steps i mean that's a very thick branch um, I think it's not as many, well there is that, yeah, so there is this branch, let's swing this back around that way, I think you might have a better, might have a better view that way. Yeah, so there is, there is this branch just in here, so we could do a similar thing and cut that in there and, and then have this branch acting as the new, the new leader for that branch or possibly even this, but this is quite straight through here. So having that as a new leader isn't, I don't think it's gonna to help too much. So if it is gonna be anything, it'll be that one. But I think for the time being, I'm just gonna let that grow and see see what happens. Yeah, so that's the pyrocanther. Quite an interesting looking tree. The, the, these, are, these are quite versatile plants from what I gather and I've, this is the first one that I've had in, in my collection. Um, they seem to be very similar to Cotoneaster. Perhaps they can't, you know, they can't tolerate the frost quite, quite in the same way. But yeah, they uh, they take easily from cuttings. I've I've taken a few cuttings from this and pretty much had a maybe about an eighty percent, ninety percent strike rate. So very easy to grow plant and. It seems that whatever you throw at this, it just it just will take it and absorb it and and come back with a vengeance, and that has been the case with this one. So again, that's that's lots of possibilities for that one, and again, I guess it's going to be quite an interesting tree for the future. Right. So on the subject of Cotoneasters, uh, here are the two. Here are a couple that I have in my collection. Uh, so we have this one here. Uh, these are both grown from cuttings. Uh, this one is has been trained in, in the classic S shape. Uh, I think it's I think I took the cuttings. Must have been twenty 
2019, 2020, I think I did these. And yeah, looking very healthy, lots of growth on it. I mean, the Tony Acid is very similar to Pyrocanther in the sense that you can you can prune them back quite hard. They they respond well. They tolerate a lot. Um, they can tolerate the, uh, the the frost a lot better than Pyrocanthers. Um, and these uh, yeah makes they make quite interesting bonsai trees. So the other one, so this little one, this is somewhat of a cascade. Not quite because it doesn't dip below the edge of the pot, but it's quite an interesting tree. And this has a, has a strange root system. It's It was grown as a cutting and it had quite a strange root system. When I went to repot, it had quite a strange root system. Um, you had this this strange, um, these strange contorted roots. And then on the bottom of this, you had a big sort of clump of feeder roots. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll use this as a feature, separate, you know, spread out the feeder roots in a nice radial direction, and have this as a as a feature of the tree. And I think it looks quite nice. The thing with anything like this, Cotoneastes and Pyracanthus, there's no real example in nature that you can follow to to base the style of the tree on, because they're they're shrubs and not trees. So with anything like this, your imagination is really your own and you can take these in any direction that you wish. Right, so I thought I'd show you these two. These aren't really bonsais in the traditional sense, but they are little plants nonetheless. And these are all cuttings that I took a few, a few months back. And these are huckleberry, huckleberry box. So these are very similar to boxwoods. They, they strike incredibly easily and uh, they they all look very healthy and they, well, apart from that middle one that's that doesn't have anything on it at all no buds so that might be a goner but everything else seems to be looking quite nice uh, nice branches on it and hopefully will become quite a nice quite a nice forest or on a nice tree in the future. I'm not really a fan of forests, and um, the main reason is I don't have enough. I don't have a lot of space. Uh, if I had the space where I could use seed trays and things like that for forests, or maybe you know large pots, then then I would do that. But because space is a bit of an issue, I I like to stick to just individual individual trees and individual pots. Maybe you know maybe if things change and I can expand out and you know have more space, then then I'll be able to venture down that path. Right, so the other interesting tree that I wanted to show you, or interesting plant even, this is a smoke bush, and this was taken as a cutting. A friend of mine has a smoke bush grown in, grown in her garden, and I asked her last year if I could take a cutting. She allowed me to, so this was what I took. And I might move the huckleberries out of the way so you can see this a bit better. There we go. So this. Yeah, as I say, it was taken as a cutting, and it looks as though it's taken. There's all kinds of buds on it. There's a couple of buds up there. There's a couple of buds on that one. So, looks like it's this has been successful. Now, smoke bushes are very interesting trees, and the one that she had she has in her garden has these lovely purple leaves and. And make this a very impressive looking tree, so to have a miniature version of that as a bonsai would be, would be excellent. So that's what I hope to achieve for this one. Again, this doesn't look like much at the minute, but you know, give it time. Um, looks as though it's, it's taken, and we just give that time, let that grow, and see what that becomes in the future. Right, so next couple of trees. So what we have here, so this one here, this is a, a, unimus, a unimus spire. I think that's how you say it, unimus. Uh, again, this came from my same friend's garden. She has a unimus grown, quite a large unimus bush um, in her garden. And this was taken as a cut-in. I think I've had this now for about two, just over two years. And it's growing quite well. Uh, unimus take it incredibly easily from cuttings. Uh, you know, you, you, you get maybe about a 70, 80% strike rate. They're really, really easy to take. And as a result of that, they, they can tolerate quite extreme root pruning. 
and they just pump out growth like there's no tomorrow. You can see on this, it's full of buds. It looks incredibly healthy. Uh, this was repotted in February and it looks very healthy. So that's quite a nice, quite a nice looking little tree. So just let that one grow and hopefully that'll become a nice bonsai in the future. Now this one, this is a green beech. Uh, this was a seedling, uh, well this was uh, grown from seed even. Uh, it's two years old and I repotted this in February. Now the roots on this were uh, in a really bad state. They're all tangled up, they're in a big loop, they're knotted together. So I really had to cut back hard on this one to try to create a nice radial root spread. Uh, as it stands, nothing much is happening with this. Uh, but I think with this one I'll just let this sit on my bench and Hopefully in time it will recover and start growing again, but yeah, as it is, that's just recovering from its root pruning. Right, so this one here, this is a Chinese elm. Again, this is in the classic S shape. Uh, this I must have had for the past, I'd say six, seven years and uh, I've just been training it to keep it small and pruning, pruning all the branches to try and get some nice ramification and it's it's looked quite nice it's turning turning into quite a nice little bonsai tree I repotted this back in February and uh, it, it doesn't seem to have skipped a beat it's putting out buds and leaves and, and looking fantastic so come I'd imagine we're in April now, so come May, this should be in full leaf and, and look excellent. So that's what, what I like about this is when I, I repotted this, as I say, in February, and the, where I had the soil lung was up here somewhere. So when I, this is why it's when repotting, it's important to dig down and try and find out where your root spread is. Because by doing so, I found this is a bit of a funny root, but Beyond that, it's, it looks quite interesting. I thought it makes quite a nice feature of the of the surface roots. I don't know if it's everybody's cup of tea having that big big lump on the side, but I just thought I added a bit of character to the tree and made it look like quite an interesting bonsai tree. This is what I like about bonsai, is you can take it in any angle that you wish. You know, it doesn't need to suit everybody's um, outlook or ideas. You know, if, if you decide that you would like your tree to look in a certain way or certain style, then you're more than welcome to, to do that. You know, you, I don't believe that you should be pressured into doing anything, and bonsai is certainly a free art where you can you can choose how and wish, or how and, uh, you know, whatever way you wish to you know, have your tree looking. So this here is a, this is a hawthorn. And this was collected, must have been collected back in 2018, 2019, I think. It's got kind of quite an interesting story about this because when I collected this, it was, it was quite a long shoot. It must have been a good meter or so tall or, or long. And I cut it down and Plant. It had a, a, a few roots on the bottom, and I planted up. It's only a, a small tree, but I planted up in a, in a pot. And for some reason, I don't know if I did something wrong, but it it died back. Now, come the following spring, it, it was it wasn't putting out any buds. It, it just it didn't look healthy at all. So I scratched at the surface, and it looked brown. And I thought, oh god, you know, the the, the tree's died. It's 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 a goner. Um, but what I did is I cut back, so I, I took it in centimetre segments. So I went down bit by bit, just cut a centimetre, checked to see if it's brown, it still was. So I went down, cut another centimetre down, checked if it's still brown, it still was. Cut again, and I just kept going down and down and down until it was until it hit green. Eventually I did, 
and by this stage it's a tiny little stamp just about that big but it was still green and with that I just left that and over time a little bud developed right in a convenient spot via the top of that cut point and it just shot off you know shot upwards and and eventually became this and so that's the story behind this one and as it is right now it's bursting full of growth uh, there's shoots and branches growing off in all different directions it, this certainly will need a, a pruning over the coming weeks but yeah that's the that's the hawthorn right so here we have the sycamore now many many people over the years have told me you cannot make a bonsai out of a sycamore tree just because the leaves are too big and so i've t taken it upon myself to challenge them with that one and here we go this is a sycamore bonsai so as you can see it's it's in good health there are buds up there that are going to pop any minute there's buds all over it so th this was a collected tree that i've had since i'd say must have had this since maybe 2018 2019 and since then I've just been gradually styling it into a bonsai tree. Now you can see there's quite a nasty wound here. That's because originally there was a, a big branch coming off here. Now uh, there were branches, there were, you know, I did have buds coming on the end of that branch that I were originally going to um, style into, or be being a, you know, style into the, in, into a, a canopy of sorts. Um, but as this was so straight and then this branch was so straight, it just it, it just didn't look right. You had a big elbow on this part of the tree and it just looked really awkward. So what I've done, I've, I've cut that back. I've tried to carve in here. It's maybe not the best carving job ever done. I was thinking of carving a bit further down and maybe trying to make it look a bit more distressed. Maybe even carving right down to here. I don't know if that'd be a bit extreme, but it is a possibility. But yeah, you have these two branches up top. I've tried to wire that down just to, because otherwise there's a bit of a Y thing going on. So I've tried to wire that around just to give it a bit of a bend. And it's just been a case of cutting this back and trying to turn it into a tree. So it's a twin trunk, as you can see, there's a another branch coming off to the side, another trunk coming off to the side. Again, this is at a similar bit of work done to it. You can see there's a Quite a nasty scar on the back, on the, well, on the underside, just there. And quite a large wound just on the top. So yeah, it's had a lot of work done to this. Um, certainly not the most attractive tree. Um, has a very interesting base to it. This is, as I say, this was collected. So I've just allowed this to grow. Now, Going back to what I said earlier about what, why do people say that you can't grow a, a sycamore as a bonsai tree and the, the main reason is the leaf size. Now, they are right that sycamore, see, uh, sycamore trees have large leaves, but what I found with this is over the years, if you reduce the root ball, as I've done, this is just grown in a, in a little tray now, but bit by bit over time, I've taking this down from growing in quite in quite a large flower pot to you know gradually reducing the size of the pot so that eventually it fits into this tray and what you find is as you reduce the root ball the size of the leaves reduce too and so last year and I can show you again uh, later this year I do another video on this tree the the leaves on the sycamore are, are no bigger now than a, a Japanese maple and when, when I tell people that they're they don't believe me. <laughs> they they really they're amazed. But yeah, as I say, later in the year, I uh, I do another video on this tree and I'll, I'll show you that, and so that it, it is possible to turn a sycamore tree into a bonsai tree. Right. So the last tree that I was going to talk about today is this Norway spruce, and as you've probably already seen, uh, back in December, quite a few YouTubers went out and bought these miniature. Uh, the Christmas trees that the the supermarkets and the garden centres were selling and uh, following their suggestion I went out and and did it myself and this is what I got now 
back in December, I made some styling ideas, or put some styling ideas on this tree, cut back some branches, and I was, I, I was actually quite fortunate in the sense that this is quite this has quite a nice trunk to it, and it didn't have a bad set of branches, and perhaps not the best, but from what it was, and it's just a, a field-grown spruce tree, you know, designed to be a short-lived Christmas tree in somebody's home. It, it it wasn't a bad little tree, and so what I've tried, to, what, what you've probably, have, I mean, if you've watched any of their, you know, those videos where people have styled these trees, what they usually did is they wired all of these branches down. Now I was quite fortunate with this tree in the sense that my aim was that you can see there's quite a thick branch coming up here, and then this branch carried on upwards. But because I had this lower down, if I just cut that top part of that branch off, you can allow this to develop. Now you could argue that there's quite a, a knuckle on this branch now, but I think over time that will smooth over and eventually that should become quite a nice looking branch. You just need to allow this to continue to grow and, uh, and develop over time. And similar with these branches over here. Again, there's quite a nasty wound here, but using a similar idea, we just allow this shoot to grow and just extend outwards over time. And eventually this should heal. That could be cut down, that could be cut back a little bit more, but over time, this branch should bl blend in with this and you have a nice transition from the trunk up into this and over into this. So that's, I'll that just spin this around a little bit more. The rest of the, I mean, this branch did have to be wired down slightly, just because it's pointing upwards. But most of them, I've just allowed to do their own thing. I've just made appropriate branch selection where I've had some naturally horizontal facing branches. There's a little bit of wire that's been used on that one, and a little bit on that one. But for the most part, I managed to go quite lightly on the wire on this on this tree and just use some of its natural form. Now, I have left quite a pom-pom on the top, and the reason for that was, is that what you may have seen with some of those other YouTubers is when they pulled these trees out of the pots, they had quite a nice root ball. Now, I wasn't so fortunate when I got this tree, as when I went to do the same thing, the root system on this was very poor. You could see clearly it had been grown in a field, but there's just a, some hard, there's some uh, thick roots that have been cut back, and no more than a dozen fine feeder roots coming off those um, cut roots. It's a very, very weak root system, especially considering the size of the tree. So what I've done is I've just put it into some nice free draining compost, and what with the, you know, the branch selection that I've made, and by cutting it back. It's reduced the foliage, so it's reduced the stress on the roots. And I hope that with that, but keeping it somewhere, you know, out of direct sunlight, keeping it somewhere, you know, where it's it can just recover and grow. I hope that over time it will it will grow and become quite a nice tree. I've noticed that none, no other YouTuber has done an update on on the progress of these trees. So this is just nice. No indication as to what happens. You know, if you did buy one of these trees and you pruned it up, this is how it should be looking by April. So I don't see any new growth on this just yet. I don't think. I can't see any buds on this. But again, that might be because it has quite a weak root system. Yeah, for the time being, that is the Norway spruce. Right, so before I finished up this video, I thought I'd talk a little bit about bonsai tools. So it seems that everybody's in bonsai has one of these, um, these root hooks with the red handle. These are made by the millions, they're produced in China, and they usually come as part of a, a bonsai uh, tool set. Now, there's good news, there's somebody new on the scene, and he goes by the name of Matt over on Bobcat Bonsai. So he is now producing his own set of tools, and one of his um, 
one of his, he sent one of his tools to me, so this is a, a root hook. It has a nice solid wood, nice hardwood handle. It's been ergonomic, uh, ergonomically carved, so it's nice to hold in the hand. You can see the, the top here has a nice, or well, the hook has a nice twist in it. And if I, if I zoom in, can I, will it focus for me? You can see just in the, on the edge of the, the hook, I don't know if I can, can I zoom in? Is it gonna, there you go. You can see he's signed it off with his initials, MCB. Uh, he, his name is Matt, I'm not gonna tell you the rest of his name because I don't think he'll appreciate that. And then on the back, you can see number them. So this is number number six. So I'm presuming this is the sixth one that he's made. So if you're interested in these tools, I'll put a link down in the in, in the description. He's a he's a nice chap. Um, just send shoot him an email, and um, he'll be able to work something out for you. I mean, he does all different types. This is one with the uh, twist in the in the hook. I think he does one with a, a straight hook. He does so softwood handles, hardwood handles. I think he sells the hook just as is. If you just like to have, you know, the, the metal hook as it is, or, or yeah, you can. I mean, no doubt you could probably work something out with him and and come up with your own design. But yeah, if you're interested, I'll put the link down in the description below. And as always, uh, till next time, have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one.